Highly toxic pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides are standard in farming today, along with nitrate fertilizers. I asked farmers and people in agribusiness, why do we use so many chemicals? Chemicals and uh, mainly fertilizer and pesticides have come into dominance in the last 50 years and have helped to increase the crop yields in this country tremendously. The flip side is that they've often been overused and misused, and this has caused severe uh, environmental problems in places where we have agriculture. Well, in the uh, farmers have sort of gotten into a uh, into a way of farming that's been promoted uh, uh, in the last uh, 30 years or so. Uh, uh, fertilizers have, were, were cheap then and they were promoted by uh, the university researchers as the most uh, e efficient way to produce food. Well, I think uh, it's not that the farmer uh, particularly wants to do the wrong thing. These guys don't stay up all night trying to figure out how to pollute the environment. But they were taught a certain uh, type of agricultural practice that they used. And now we're finding that some of that was wrong. Chemicals from agriculture often find their way into our lakes and waterways. Nitrates from fertilizer and manure can cause the algae to grow out of all proportion, smothering the other forms of life by using up precious oxygen. The result can be a disaster for every form of life that depends upon this ecosystem. Corn is one of those major grains that is utilized in livestock production, and this is where the largest amount of insecticide, the largest amount of herbicides, and the largest amount of uh, fertilizer to use in the nation. In rural America, half of all the water wells are now contaminated by nitrates and other chemicals from agriculture, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. If a pregnant woman drinks this water, some researchers believe her fetus will be at higher risk for birth defects. The more I learned and the more connections that I saw, the more a vision began to take hold in me. I began to see what a diet for a new America would bring to us. We'd have cleaner water. We'd have less toxic chemicals building up in the food chains, less agrochemicals in the food that we eat. We'd have healthier bodies. We'd have a healthier world. What I didn't know was that there was still another example of how things are connected. Another lesson I was about to learn. Some of the animals raised for beef are in the western half of the country, where the climate is often dry. Some of the grains and pasture crops they're fed are also grown in the west, in regions where rainfall is scarce and water is a precious resource. When I drive through parts of the west, I sometimes wonder how any crop can grow here. The answer is they don't, unless you find some way to bring them water. Irrigating crops in such dry places requires enormous amounts of water. Few city people are aware of how much water is used to irrigate cattle feed. If you've seen California, you'd guess that most of the state's water is used in Los Angeles. 12 million people surrounded by lawns and swimming pools, irrigating a semi-desert. But irrigating pasture crops and alfalfa uses more water than all the people in Los Angeles combined. In fact, more than all the cities in the state taken together. It is estimated that so much water is used to irrigate all the croplands and pasture lands to provide feed for the animals that every thousand pound steer carcass that comes down the assembly line at the slaughterhouse has consumed enough fresh water to float a naval destroyer. We're subsidizing livestock by giving them cheap water. In a sense, we're actually paying the livestock industry with our own resources. We're depleting what is incredibly valuable to cities, to people who need it for drinking water, to wildlife, to the whole life support systems of the West and of the United States in general in order to be able to give livestock an inordinate share, vastly more than any other industry takes. 
To grow a pound of apples in California today, you need 49 gallons of water. A pound of potatoes uses 24 gallons, according to the University of California. But a pound of beef produced in California today uses more than 5,000 gallons of water. Half the water used in the United States today and consumed is consumed in order to raise crops so that they can be fed to livestock. As a consequence, what's happened is, is that particularly in the southwestern part of the United States, or in the high plains states, where the Ogallala Reservoir, which is an underground aquifer, is being pumped up and is being used to such an extraordinary extent that some say within this generation it will be exhausted. An area that had as much water in it as the Great Lakes. If that water goes to feed livestock, we're going to see an undermining of the entire economies of the high plain states. Buried deep beneath the Great Plains, under the very heart of our continent, lies the world's largest store of fresh water. A gift from the Ice Ages, this natural wonder was formed over geological time. The people in the economies of the High Plains states depend on it almost exclusively for their water. But this water is now being pumped out so rapidly, environmentalists say that the Ogallala could be bone dry in as few as 30 years. And where's the water going? The great majority is used to irrigate crops to feed cattle. Especially since the drought of 1988, it's very clear how precious water is. And our rivers and aquifers are running at very low levels. And large-scale animal agriculture draws more water out of our rivers and aquifers than any other activity we engage in as a society. So if we're concerned with water, and it is the lifeblood not only of the West, but of this whole country, then we're going to have to begin to eat less meat and begin to put the water on only those crops that we're going to consume ourselves. When people buy meat, they think the price they pay is so many dollars and cents. But if we could look at that meat and see the true cost it embodies, enormous quantities of water, vast areas of land, the contamination of our life support systems, the cost to the environment must now be counted as part of the true price that we pay for any product. If Americans change their diet and decrease the amount of meat they're eating, there is going to be a tremendous amount of land freed up with which we could do wonderful things. Just try to imagine what could happen if people were to eat less meat in this country. It would relieve the pressure to grow more crops to feed to the livestock. And as a consequence, those croplands could be reforested to the tunes of tens of millions of acres which could help even the global warming situation. With a healthy forest, we have a continuing supply of lumber to build our houses. A healthy forest takes oxygen and places it into the air, takes carbon dioxide out of the air. It stabilizes the topsoil, it purifies the water, it provides a home for wildlife to bring in the tourists. A healthy forest is worth far more than an acre of grass with a cow on it. Just letting the forest come back would be a wonderful use for these lands. We'd be able to find that water was available where it wasn't before, because all of it wouldn't have to go to trying to create crops to feed to livestock. So we'd have a greater amount of water for cities to grow. It would also mean that the amount of chemicals that we are pouring into the environment would be drastically reduced. And every bit that we can do to reduce chemicals going into our environment is very, very critical at this point. We would have less heart attacks. We would have less strokes. We would have less cancers and less fear of cancer. We would have less diabetes. We'd be trimmer, more fit, more healthy, more happy people. And I think if we really, as human beings, ask those questions of what is the impact of my meat consumption, how are the animals treated which land up on my table, then we have a choice to make, to respect life, and maybe to eat less meat. <laughs>